Hi, I'm Anthony Mangano, and today, today we're in Mill Basin, Brooklyn to visit the Church of Mary, Queen of Heaven. So here I am on Avenue N, right here in Mill Basin, Brooklyn. And right here is Elizabeth's dance image. See now, that's been here for a long time. My daughter went there, and she's my wife's friend, and her kids are friends with my family. And our producer, Laura, she actually graduated from there. It's a great place, a lot of people come from here. Now here we come to a landmark, Palermo's Pastry Shop. This has been here since 1974. Now you gotta see this place. Normally on the weekend it's jam packed. When holidays come, there's a line. It either goes that way around the corner or that way. I know because I've stood on it. They've got some of the greatest cookies and pastries and cakes. We're gonna go inside and just take a look. So come on inside here. This is a landmark. Palermo's has been a landmark in this neighborhood. Rita, right? Yes. Hi Rita, say hello to our viewers. How you doing? We're doing an episode of Mary Queen of Heaven on Ch Ch City of Churches here and we're in here and I wanted to show one of the landmarks and I said, I come in here a lot to get pastries and cookies and cakes and bread and I tell them during the holidays that the lines. It's outside. Outside, you yeah. gotta wait here. No but, what, if but, it's rain or but, snow. Rain or snow, but you know what? It's worth it because the food, primo. Yes. Perfect there and you guys are all so sweet. I just love yes. the decor because it's got that old style sure. that I remember from years ago. You got the cookies inside there, Still the biscotti. biscotti. And you got the pinoli cookies, you got lemon meringue pie, all his pastries he all makes fresh. This is like, and people come from all over that even if they moved away, they come back just for this. I, it, holidays, boxes this high just to get just to get their cookies and their cakes just for that, and then they the, and then they head home to Jersey or Long Island yep. or wherever it is. But that's a testament to this place. Yes. Rita, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, for this is great. Anytime, okay? Come on, we got a lot of other places to hit. All right. Take care. Bye bye. So here we are on Avenue N with another landmark, Pastoza Ravioli. Now we're gonna go inside and check it out. So come on, they got great ravioli, managot, and fresh mozzarella to die for. Come on. So here we are at Pastoza's. Now this is another landmark that's been here for years. Now look around. I feel like a kid in the candy store because you can smell all this great food. I mean, they make their own stuff, their own raviolis, their own managat. I mean, their own sauces and stuff like that. And I come in there unusually to get the, the fresh mozzarella. And, you know, you got olives and stuff like that. I know my senior Jamie would love this place because he's probably been in there a million times. But you can see, and, and, and people come, like I said, from all over just to come back and get the fresh Italian, you know, food and stuff that's being made here. And it's a really, it's been a landmark that's been here. And thank God it's still here because it's a great area. So come on, I got some other places to show you around. And as you can see, look, people are in here, they're buying things, fresh raviolis, and look, look at this. Hello, say hi. It's the best. Fresh mozzarella, the best. You can feel it, it's warm. Great yeah. stuff, thank you so much for letting us come in here, okay? Wow. So here we are, Ron Avenue again, in East 46th Street, and we're at another landmark in this neighborhood, Moretti Bakery. Now, this place has got some of the best bread ever. I'm very biased to it, and I have to tell you, I think it's fantastic. Again, I have to tell you, on weekends and mornings, this place is jammed. My father-in-law comes here every morning to get rolls for my nieces and nephews. So they know me in here, they know him. And on holidays, the lines, again, go down the block. People come from Jersey, the Bronx, Long Island, Staten Island, just to come here. So we're gonna go inside and I'm gonna show you. So here we are, we're Moretti Bakery here on Avenue N. It's a landmark, and we have, what's your name again? Eileen. Eileen Gina. and Gina is one of the owners this place is a landmark when I tell you I was telling you outside my father-in-law comes every morning to get rolls for my nieces and nephews and it's been a tradition this place is jam-packed all the time and especially holidays I have to tell you if you don't get your order in early forget it you're done so you got to get here early and you got to get great they got great great bread I mean I'd probably be 300 pounds if I ate it every day that's how good it is I want to thank you so much for being on City of Churches God bless you and thank you for letting us come in, okay? So here we are, another landmark right next to Moretti Bakery is Aliata Pastry Shop. I mean, this place is beautiful. Gorgeous food, great, great pastries, cakes, you name it, they've got it. You gotta go inside and check this out. 
There's a lot of landmarks in this area that are still standing, like I said, it's still keeping the neighborhood strong. So come on inside. So here we are, right next door to Moretti Bakery, we're in Aliata Pastry Shop. Look at this place. I feel like, I feel like Willy Wonka. That's just how great it is. Look at all these cakes and pastries and cookies. I mean, it's amazing what they do here, the decorations and stuff. They're working hard in the back. Of, look at some of these cakes. Look at this, like a wedding cake and a butterfly cake. I mean, they make like really, really great stuff. And I'm walking over here, and what do I see? My favorite, old-fashioned apple crumb. I could probably eat that in one setting. That's how great this place is. I mean, look at this. This is a landmark. And again, people come from all over to just stand online here, especially during the holidays, to get this. Because, you know, they move away and neighborhoods change, but they still come back tradition. It's a great place. You ought to check it out. Aliata Pastry Shop on Avenue N and Moretti's Bakery. Well, come on. we got some other places to see, okay? Now, we're going to go inside and meet Monsignor Jamie. There's a lot of history about this church. It's called the Church in the Basement, and we're going to tell you why. So come on. Well, here we are at Mary Queen of Heaven in Old Mill Basin. There's a little controversy about that Old Mill Basin and New Basin, Mill Basin, but we'll get into that. And the current pastor of the church is Father Thomas Leach. But we thought it would be really nice to have the former pastor of this church, who you will all recognize, Monsignor Jamie from Breaking Bread. <laughs> and we wanted to, you know, we, we, we went and we did St. Bernard's with you, and we did Our Lady of Mount Carmel, and Annunciation, Church Annunci of the Annunciation. Annunciation. And we're going to be, now we're doing Mary Queen of Heaven because this was your first pastoring. church pastoring. Yes. So I'm, thank you for coming on thank the show. You. Thank you for having no, me. Oh, are you kidding? This is great. I'm going on your show. You're coming on my show. I'm hitting all the churches in the diocese. Well, this is really good. <laughs> this is a really good show. You know, this is where we met. Yes. And we talked I about that. I remember that. Yes, I remember you during the day I would be here in church and I would always see you coming in and coming in to say a prayer. Yeah. And I would say hello, good afternoon. And then we started talking. At the time you were praying for your niece. Yeah, my niece Liliana. Thank, right. thank God she's doing okay. Thank she's God. She's doing okay. You, Father Elias, I remember. And we prayed. You guys all prayed. Yes, I, asked, pray. I asked you guys and, and prayer is strong. Prayer is powerful. I was, I was very impressed by how, you know, how faithful you were to coming to you know, to pray during the week all the time. And then I would see you here once in a while on Sunday. I know you're a, a parishioner of St. Bernard's mm -hmm. Church, uh, but uh, it was a, a while ago. Yeah, it's what our friendship started. Now yes. look where we are from that to this. Yes, you got a little older. Yes, I did. A little, gray, <laughs> a little grayer too now, so it's okay. You know what they say, it's better to be gray than to fade away. Hey, exactly, exactly. <laughs> now, I wanted to make sure Old Mill Basin, New Mill Basin, can you explain that to well, us? Well, this was always Mill Basin. There okay. was Flatlands and then Mill Basin. And when this parish was established, uh, past Ralph Avenue were all swamps. Sure. There was a beach down Bergen Beach, and it was a real beach with an amusement park. The trolley went up to Ralph Avenue, and that was it. And that's where it ended. And um, then when that started to develop in the 50s and 60s, um, that was also known as Mill Basin. So this became Old Mill Basin. That never became New Mill Basin, but that was Mill Basin, it was part of Mill Basin. But now this became Old Mill Basin. And then they that's developed the parish of St. Bernard. Bernard, yeah. yes, that's how that parish came about. So tell us, what was it like, I mean, coming here to become the pastor of this church? There's so much history here. Yes, there is. I mean, first of all, I came here, I was in my first parish was St. Patrick's in Bay Ridge. Mm -hmm. And you ask any priest, their first parish is always your first love. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you're new, everyone loves you, you fall in love with the people, the neighborhood. And I had a great experience at uh, St. Patrick's. And then at the time, they had this five-year rule. So after five years, you had to be transferred. So I really didn't want to be transferred because I loved it there. And uh, they gave me, a, I, got, I received a call from the, the vicar and he said, uh, we want to send you to uh, Mary Queen of Heaven. I said, where is that? And he said, in Old Mill Basin. I said, where is that? <laughs> so I came here. I wasn't so happy in the beginning because, you know, you, you, you love a place and then they take you out. But I knew that's, you know, that's my calling. You have to, you know, we, do, we take a, a vow of obedience to the bishop. And I came here and in the first couple of months, you know, I was sad. And, you know, every time we went back to Bay Ridge, I would cry. But uh, then I got, you know, I fell in love with the people here. And I was only here about a year and a half, and uh, the pastor at the time was uh, 
Father Delaney, and uh, he resigned. I hope it had nothing to do with me. But uh, anyway, he resigned, and they asked me to be the pastor here. And uh, that was a wonderful experience. That was in 2002. And uh, it really, um, I fell in love with the people, the parish. And it was, uh, you know, a, a fantastic time. The people were wonderful. It was a very mixed community. We had all-time Irish and Italian. We had a Hispanic here. And then we had a very a big influx of Caribbean and Haitian parishioners. So it was a wonderful family here, and I loved it here. I was here for over 12 and a half years. Uh, during that time, we celebrated the 75th anniversary of the parish. The motto for the 75th anniversary was a touch of heaven in Brooklyn, where people experienced heaven right here in this parish of Mary, Queen of Heaven. So it was a touch of heaven in Brooklyn. Wow. And this year, we're celebrating the 90th anniversary of the parish. 90th? Yes. Wow. We just celebrated. We just had a celebration. Uh, we had a, uh, they had a number of activities throughout the year. And uh, I participated in some of them. They called me back to be guest speaker. I was at their dinner dance. It was wonderful. I understand that they have like a video or something that the viewers can actually, people watching, they can actually purchase, I think, here if they come down to the church about all the pictures and... Well, yes, and for the 90th anniversary, they had a, um, a collage, a montage of, you know, different events that took place over the 75th anniversary and throughout all the years of the parish, and it, it, people can purchase it as a, a remembrance of the 90 years of Mary, Queen of Heaven. talking about you named your wine? Well, uh, as you know, I make the wine. Yes, and, and you cook. And we I, all know I that. call it a, a taste of heaven in Brooklyn. Mary, Queen of Heaven, this is where I started making when I started making the wine and, and doing Breaking Bread. This is where we filmed Breaking Bread in the very beginning, almost nine, ten years ago. I, you know, I never had your wine, so that's next. I've had oh, your you cooking. Had my wine. Now I've got yeah. it. No, I haven't <laughs> tasted your wine. I've had the bread, but I've had the food. I've had everything. Now the we wine. break bread and we drink wine. Oh, that's what got to hold you to that. <laughs> how how did the, you think they got the name for Mary Queen of Heaven? The name? Well, I mean, every parish is usually named there for title of the Blessed Mother or, or or Jesus or our Lord or a saint. And the first pastor usually has a say in that. The first pastor here. Uh, was Monsignor Crawford, and they celebrated the Mass in the very beginning. They had a tent. Then they had a storefront on uh, East 58th Street and Avenue N. Mass was celebrated in there. And then they built this church here, and um, it, this was the foundation and the plan was to build a beautiful structure above here. But the parish was founded in 1927. So as they were raising the funds to build a beautiful church, the depression hit. And the pastor at the time, um, he felt that it was more important to help feed the families in the parish and put food on the table than to build another church. So they were worshiping in this lower church here. And um, here we are 90 years later, and an upper church was never built. And that's why it's known as the basement church. That's what fascinated me about this and the story that when I heard that they gave the money back to the community. Yes. That is amazing. Because, yes. you know, it's nice to hear, because everybody thinks, oh, it's all about money. No, it wasn't. He did something amazing there and gave it back to feed the people. That in itself was a miracle. Sure. And, and a testament to his being a good person. You sure. know, and the church. And that's, and what, that's what church is all about. I mean, yes, brick and mortar is beautiful. And we have magnificent churches in Brooklyn, city of churches. We have magnificent churches around the world. But the church basically are the people of God. And, and to care for one another, to care for a community, to live as a family, 
And that's exactly what he did. He fed the family. Well, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, um, my senior Jamie is going to tell us a lot more about Mary, Queen of Heaven. So we'll be right back. Tell me, the, the, the masses here, um, now that you said the demographics changed a little bit, mostly English? Or is there any other? No, map? yes. I mean, there are. It's most, mostly English. I know the we had a Filipino population here, and they would have a mass here um, on the fifth Sunday of the month. So two or three times of the year, there's a fifth Sunday, and uh, they would celebrate um, a mass here. And then also now there's a Creole mass here. Uh, I believe it's once a month, and uh, they celebrate mass here. Wow. But the other masses are still in English. Yeah, I've been here for some time. I, I, you know, I fluctuate. I go from church to church, kind of like I'm doing my homework, so right. kind of, you know, for the show. And I've seen a mixture of all different cultures and races here. Right, right, right. And, uh, but it is, you know, it, we do these shows, and a lot of the churches, they look the same, some right. of them. You know, they're beautiful. But then there's churches that, like this, that don't look the same as the other churches. Right. But the story right. and the people and the community, that's, that's what makes it fascinating for City of Church. And that's the church. That's yeah. And out of this church came two priests, uh, Father Fer Steve Ferrari mm -hmm. and also uh, Father Frank Tamino. Both came from this parish. Their, their vocations were nurtured here in this parish. Were there any other prominent people that came from Well, here? I mean, many priests were assigned here. Uh, one of them that sticks out in my mind is Father Marsh. Mm -hmm. Father Marsh was beloved by everyone in the parish. In fact, there's a statue uh, of St. John Vianney, who was the patron saint of parish priests. And that statue was put up in his honor because he was so dedicated to the people and he was so special to children. Uh, he cared for all the children. He was there with them. And many people believe he should be a saint uh, because many people that have gotten sick in this parish uh, they, he had a robe that he wore, uh, and when he died, and it's still part of the parish. And many people, when they're sick, come and they ask to wear that robe. Some people got cured, others didn't. But many people put a lot of faith in that. Uh, so uh, he's a special priest that was a part of this parish. Father Marsh, who was a priest here from 1972 until 1980, and in those eight years, he wrapped this place into glory. What a priest he was. He took the gospel message of Christ. If you love one another, love one another. If you are my disciples, follow, follow one and love one another. And by that he meant the poor. So Father Mars had several, he poured to himself, and he's like the Pied Piper with all those kids following him. The poor, the sick, the invalids, the distressed, the hungry, all of them were his parishioners, and he worked with them and did well. And there were many other people that came out of this parish too, not just uh, priests, but lay people. Um, one, there's a statue, well, I, I put up a little monument in the back because when I was here, uh, I met someone by the name of uh, Phil Dusenberry. Phil was a pioneer in advertising, and he, uh, he ran Ronald Reagan's second campaign when he ran for president. And he also uh, came up with many slogans, the Pepsi generation and GE, we bring good things to life. <laughs> Those were all founded by him. Nice and, kid from um, Brooklyn. and what happened was when I, I was just here and I was reading in the newspaper a little story about this Phil Dusenberry, and uh, it said he came from Mill Basin. So I checked it out and I gave him a call and he came from Mary Queen of Heaven. And we developed a friendship and he supported a lot of the work that was done around the parish. And then another Sunday I was here and I went to the back of the church and there was a, a young man there uh, with his daughter. I said, hello, how are you? Welcome to our parish. Are you new? He said, no, I'm not new, I'm old. I said, what do you mean? He said, uh, I grew up in this parish and I just wanted to take my daughter here. And um, so I invited him in. I gave him a cup of coffee and I took him over to the school. I showed him the school. And then the next day he called me up and he said, Monsignor, is there anything I could do to help you? Well, I wasn't even a Monsignor, I was a father. Is there anything I could do to help you? So he came and he wound up, he did over our computer lab and uh, wound up, it was Frank Bisignano, who's now the uh, CEO and uh, chairman of uh, First Data. And uh, he was with Chase Manhattan Bank at the time and he's been a very big supporter of futures in education. 
He's probably one of the biggest benefactors to the diocese. And he came from this parish. A lot of good things came out of this, this church place. Church in the basement. Yeah. The church in the basement, a touch of heaven in Brooklyn. You, know, you, you almost wonder if it was God's plan, and this may sound a little crazy, that it stayed this way. Yes. That all these years later, that the church in the basement would get that name so yes. it would be prominent yes. and stand out on its own. That it wasn't a giant church. The beauty is in the people. Yeah. The people yeah. of God. Monsignor Burns. Right. I heard a lot of good things about him. Well, he was here for many years in the parish. We named the parish center after him. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he was a pastor here. And then when he retired, he lived here in his retirement uh, throughout my years here. And uh, uh, we lived together. And uh, uh, he just recently passed away. Yeah. And it was amazing because at his funeral, Father Moss, who celebrated the Mass, he was a kid who grew up in the parish. He's now a Benedictine priest. He ended his homily by saying, now there's a touch of Brooklyn in heaven. Oh, that's so, nice. So, uh, you know, that logo, you know, remains here uh, so much. And it's it, because this parish is such a, a wonderful uh, expression of faith and what a parish should be. I remember when I was here, uh, after I became pastor, I was here for a year or two, uh, and my mother got sick. And for the last six, year, uh, six months of her life, she lived here in the rectory with me. And the I last- I do remember this. Yes, and I had hospice here. And the people of the parish uh, really came out. They took care of her. Uh, they helped me during that, that trying time. And they were wonderful. And uh, I'll never forget that. And when she passed away, one of the parishioners put up a, a statue of St. Francis outside in her, her memory. That's the type of people that live here I in Mary, we, Queen we, of we, Heaven. We we're gonna show that and, yes. and there's a memorial garden. Yes. And you know, during that time, I, I forgot, another famous thing came out here. We put together a cookbook, A Taste of Heaven in Brooklyn, for the 75th. Yours? And all, well, I had a few recipes, okay. but all the people of the parish contributed recipes. Oh, they, and, I have to look at this yes. because you gotta, so between you open Italian up the book and, Irish and eat the and, oh my God. Break bread, drink the wine. I think it's time that you, um, it's time for a new book. Monsignor Jamie's Breaking Bread book. With all your recipes, my God. For the last time I was on your show, the seafood lasagna. Uh. No, I told people, they're like, are you kidding me? Like, you know, you tell an Italian seafood lasagna. Ah, no the meat. cream cheese. The cream cheese. That was great. You want to watch the show, you'll get the recipe. I, I can't wait till this airs, because my father-in-law's friend, I would see him all the time, and he's a, he's a parishioner here, and he goes, when are you going to do about the basement church? When are you going to do this? We're going to do it, I promise you, and you're going to be happy. So there he is. When he sees this, he's going to be happy. So that's it for this episode. So if you have any questions, you can follow us on Facebook or Twitter, or you can follow us on netnewyork.tv, or you can write into us at City of Churches, 1712 10th Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11215. Until next time, I'm Anthony Mangano with Monsignor Jamie, and I thank you so much, and God bless you. Thank you so much.